Is it 7.15? Jay drank it. <laughs> well, it was clean. It was just out of the sink. Was, the, was it actually clean though? Yeah, I pulled it out of the dishwasher. Okay. For all the watchers out there, Jake smells like a fire. <laughs> like barbecue. Yeah. It's just like a Oh, nice... we should have done Foxy Lady by oh, Jimi Hendrix. Yes. That was by Barb. Barb. So yeah. sorry that we missed that opportunity. Okay, we ready? Um, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> oh, you wanted us. Yay, yay. <laughs> sorry, I was talking. Do it again. Like, are we ready? Do it one more time. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> yay. yay. Okay. Let's do it. Welcome. <laughs> at, <laughs> well, this is going to be a wild night. <laughs> Buckle up, you guys. Welcome to Let's Make Art. Uh, we are a watercolor company that makes a different project every week and you guys paint with us and it is so much fun and I love hanging out with you guys and this is what we're painting tonight. <gasps> Our fox! <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for our foxes, we're using four colors tonight. We have tangerine and dandelion yellow and berry blue and black. If you are using Dr. P.H. Martin paints, then you're looking for amber yellow, daffodil yellow, black, and peacock blue, I believe is the blue. Um, and two brushes, round six and around two for tonight. And then we have outlines. Now I already traced theirs because it was my fault and I only brought one outline, but I will do this for you guys. And should we do outline first or oath first? Outline first. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you guys just hang tight and I'm going to show you guys how to do the outline. So if you get our kits or our subscription, or if you just want the outline, you can get it on our website. Let's make art.com. You find the Fox project. You click on the button that says outline, you print it out. And then in your kit or your box, you should have a piece of graphite paper. And the graphite paper is just a way to transfer, transfer images onto another paper, and it's totally reusable. You can see that we've used it a ton of times. It actually gets better with age because then it lightens up. Put so, the dark side down, right? Dark side down. So I like to tape my outline using painter's tape onto my watercolor paper. And then, and that way it doesn't move while I'm tracing it. And then I'm going to put my graphite paper dark side down. And then I'm going to start drawing. But I just want to point out to you guys, this is me pressing hard on the ear. Okay? Look how dark that line is. So if you don't want your outline that dark, which I suggest doing it as light as you can. Do you have yours that I can see? So this is how light I did um, Michael's. Can they see that? Brock? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this is the light of the outline. So if you want it lighter, you just um, press a lot lighter on the paper and you're just gonna follow these outlines that I have for you. So you're just, and this is the difference. This is soft and that's hard. Now I'm gonna do mine a little bit darker just so you guys can see um, as we're painting the different like areas and sections. Now one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is like the outline is just more of a general idea and shape. If you mess up a line, if you cross into another section, it's not a huge deal. It's just, you know, a general idea of where things are, where shadows are, where highlights are, all of that stuff. So just go across. You can kind of check it as you go. And you can get that outline from our website too. Yeah. Uh, you can get that. Oh, Brock's mic, so you guys heard that. Good uh, job, Brock. <laughs> uh, if you want to go to the website. If you, I don't know if you guys know we have a website. Okay. Let's make art.com. Let's make art That's what it's called. And I'm focusing here. Carol, that is a pen. Oh, I'm just, you can use anything to trace it. Uh, the, the back end of a paintbrush, a pen, a pencil. Anything. A pro tip is to use a colored pen or pencil so you can see where you've traced. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Somebody said we're on the site. April, if you go to Let's Make Art, you click Shop Our Kits, scroll down, find the Fox Kit, click on it, 
and then there's a button that says outline. That's what, and it should pop up, and then you can just print it from there. Brock, you sound echoey. You should have really made us sit still for like, in the beginning, you know? <laughs> okay, I'll do better next time, okay? I'm sorry. Good. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> so then once it's done, you just softly tear that away or like peel it away. And now you have your gorgeous outline. Okay. Whoa. We what? need to do the other. Okay. What? Just before. Because, yeah. I heard what he just said. Okay. Before. <laughs> before we do the oath, I forgot to introduce everybody. So let's do that. Jake is on the end here. He usually does camera stuff. This is my husband, Michael. I, mean, I do other stuff besides camera stuff. He, he does. I barbecue. He's a gentle, hamburgers. thorough kisser. <laughs> <laughs> So if you see me cuddle this man, it's because we're married and it's okay. And this is Nicole. She's visiting us. So I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. You're going to see more of her. <laughs> That's a little hint. That's an Easter egg. That's it. <laughs> is that the right word? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. That works. Like hint. That's yeah. foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. And Brock is our cameraman. You're going to hear him in the back and we talk to you him. and silky smooth voice. It might be echoey. Echoey. We just got the second mic. We're still learning. So I'm sorry if it's a little echoey. We will work on it. Now, we're going to take the oath. Everybody, raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise, I promise to, be to be kind, kind to myself. myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise, I promise never not to, to do the comparing. comparing. I promise not to compare my work. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise to have fun. And I promise, I promise to have, to have fun. fun. Thank you. And I like to start that way because comparison is the thief of joy, all right? It's not about what the other person's doing, it's about what you're doing and the fun of it. And that's what we're focusing on here. We're all on different areas and journeys and we've all been watercoloring for different times. And it's just not fair to compare your work. It's not a fair thing to do. So don't do that to yourself. Just embrace what you're making, love it and have a good time. Okay? Look at these two buddies. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, look at you guys talking to each other. Okay, let's do our warm ups. So grab your other sheet of paper, put your outline to the side. And we're gonna practice a couple more warm-ups to get us used to. Oh, here. Thanks. To get us used to um, watercolor and the colors and all of that good stuff. Okay. No, no, no. No. Get out of there. Oh, their colors are mixing together. Okay. Now, color. when you put your paints on your palette, I tend to put a lot when we're up here because I know that we're sharing palettes and there's two people pulling from them but you don't have to put this much paint on your palette, maybe like half of a squirt, and then you can always like just add to it the more you need it. And especially like the blue, we don't use the blue very much, so just a tiny hint. So just keep that in mind is you can always add to it, and I just do a lot because I know that we're sharing. So, grab your paintbrush, any size you want. Great, and get it wet. And then you're gonna kind of hit it off the side so it's not like totally dripping wet. And what we're gonna practice here is a value change from dark to light. And so I want you to pick up some paint. I'm gonna scoop this this way so it doesn't run into our black. So basically you're gonna fill your paintbrush with paint and you're gonna lay that color down like a, like a rectangle. And then you're gonna rinse your brush. Rinse it, rinse it, rinse it. And right off, right where it let off, you're gonna add water to it and spread it to the right. Now, if you're left-handed, do it the opposite way. I think that might be easier. But you're just gonna keep on rinsing and spreading until there is a barely there color. What do you think these numbers on the brushes are? Are they measuring like the millimeter, how round they are? Like, like this is six millimeters around right here? I have no idea, but that is a great question. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Renee asked what colors we need. Uh, out of your subscription kit, you need tangerine, uh, dandelion, berry, blue, and black. And somebody asked if I always use Dr. P.H. Martin's. Uh, I don't. I also use our paints that are in the subscription called dandelion paint. 
And, um, but I do usually just use liquid watercolors because I like how vibrant they are. So you can see here we have a dark to light. Excellent, excellent, very nice. That's ex I have found some green in my paint somehow. It might have been on your brush. Okay, okay sorry about that. That looks good though, right? Looks cool. it, it does look really good, I like that color. So um, the whole point here is being able to get a full value range by just adding water. So this right here was just pure paint and then we just added the water slowly to get this full range here from like super dark to light. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, great, great. Okay, next thing that we are going to do is we're gonna practice fur textures. So get your paintbrush. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which size is best for the fur? I would do the six for the fur. I would say six as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a six. <laughs> You're great, okay. Um, so when I do my fur textures, what I like to do, and this is the magical thing about a round paintbrush, is it has a thick belly and a narrow top. And um, so you can do thick and thin lines in the same stroke. So when you do your fur, you're kind of just going to do, how do I explain this? It's like a bunch of uh, brush strokes that are kind of hitting each other right? But adjust your pressure. See how it's like narrow and then it thickens and then it gets narrow at the top. So just kind of like play with doing this, this kind of stroke. Wait, do I always thick at the top? They don't always have to be thick at the top. <coughs> just uh, don't focus too much on the thick and thinness. Instead, just play with this brush stroke. Wait, thick at the top? Okay, ignore, ignore that part and just do this. Do like Okay. Swooshes. All right, all right. I see what you got going on there. And then after you feel comfortable with the whooshes, try and make your whooshes come out from the same spot. Is whooshes a technical term? Like whooshes is a technical like from term. From the same height? No, it's not. No, not from the same height. Like literally just like one spot, like a star, like, like banana. So look at this one here. So it's kind of originating from the top, where in terms that they're connected. Mm. They're connected. This is what I translated that as. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. The same spot. <laughs> okay, there's a, there's one, one area. One area. Got it. So it's going to be like, if they're all originating from this area, it's going to be like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And they're connected, so they're kind of hitting, but the levels at the top vary. They're not a straight line at the top. Okay. And the reason why we don't want it to be an exact straight line at the top is because, <laughs> you okay, Brock? Okay. Is because on fur, there's um, fur on top of the shadow that we're painting. So the illusion is, is that this top part is actually white fur that's on top of the shadowed area. Oh. Does that make sense? So like when we do the chest hair that's white, we're going to put... We're going to use gray to do some of the fur textures and we want to have it kind of be uneven because we want to give the illusion that there's actually white fur on top of that shadowed area. You need a little bit more curve in yours. So do they need to be connected so you don't see that white? Like does it, it doesn't have to be, like if you do this, that's okay. Yeah. And you don't need to stress about, you might be like freaking out right now being like, this is so hard, what if I mess this up? Don't, because do you know what we do after we do this? We take some water and we do this and we blend it out. It's gonna be lots of blending and lots of salt textures on top. So don't stress. This is just when we're, we're gonna do some little detail wispies on the chest. And I just want you guys to be familiar with this kind of whoosh shape, whoosh brush stroke. Yeah, it helps if you do the sound. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> That's good. Okay. He's still going. He's <laughs> still doing his wishes. Okay, one other thing. One other thing we're going to practice is a thin line because we're doing a thin line for the mouth. So I want you to take your round two, your smaller paintbrush, and I want you to practice getting really thin lines. Pick up any color you want. Now this is how I get thin lines, is I get my brush just damp enough to where the paint is moves slowly. 
which is just like I put it in the water and then I hit it off the side of the glass. And then I pick up some paint. And then what I like to do is I like to kind of push my paintbrush down on my palette on both sides because then it should kind of like almost sandwich my paintbrush together to a finer point. And then I take that and I'm barely touching the paintbrush to the paper and I'm just sliding across. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Great. Now if this I have is one thing good it's going to be that. <laughs> it's going to be that line. mouth line. Now, it, this is hard because if you're pushing hard, if you're pushing hard on your paintbrush, look how thick this line can be, right? So don't stress if this just takes a little bit of practice. But one thing to keep in mind is it's easier if you keep your wrist up because then that way you have full movement as opposed to that. And then you just, I, for me, it's much easier to go across. For some people, it's easier to start at the top and drag it down. For some people, it's easier to start at the bottom and drag it up. There's no right or wrong A way. You just turn your paper to whatever orientation is easier for you in terms of making that line. For me, it's just easier to go across. And look at these great thin lines we're getting. Yes. Very nice. You guys are doing great. Excellent. So fun. Okay. <laughs> I think we're ready to do this. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. Now have your scrap paper handy. That way you can test colors or brush strokes or whatever before you start. It's always a good idea to have that. Now this box has four steps. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in the shadowed or darker areas. And then we are going to, that's step one. Step two, we are gonna do the body wash, which is just like an even color kind of way, kind of all the way across. Step three, we're gonna put in the dark, dark parts, the dark parts of the fox, which is like the chest and the ears and the center and the nose. And then the last step, step four, we're going to do the details and the eyes. Sound good? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Let's do this. So, grab your brush. Six. 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 Two. Six. 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 Grab your brush. Grab your six. And I want you to pick up a little bit of orange. And then I want you to grab a little bit of black and mix that in with the orange. And it's going to make like a brown color. And you're welcome to pull from mine if you want. So it's going to make like a brown. And using that brown, see how there's this section around the eye, this bottom part? What's that? We have a bad brown. It's very... Okay, let's it's... grab a little bit of brown. Yep, and grab some, just add more orange to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> just a touch of the master's hand. I usually sit on that side of her so she makes my paint for me. <laughs> oh, I took your spot. Me and Jake are uh, doing good at work. We're going to have green. It's, green. it's all right, good buddy. You know, they'll mix it all in. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to start filling in this shadowed area here. In his eyeball? It's the bottom part underneath his eye, that outlined area. And remember, if you go outside the outline a little bit, it's okay. This is just a general idea. I know, we're focusing now. This is serious time. Yep. Mm -hmm. And up to the side, yeah, yeah. And then... What is this? You got another little one on I know, I just went crazy. I went outside my outline. Ugh. It's not a big deal. Ugh. I'm showing you guys it's not a big deal if you, like, do that. Not a big deal. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to use that same brown and the top of the head right here, right in between these two ears, right here. I'm going to fill that in. Mm -hmm. And then behind, like this bottom part, and then behind the ears. And you see how these brush strokes are kind of loose, and I'm, they're a little bit uh, whooshy? It's okay if they're like that. They don't have to be perfectly lined up. It could just be like, 
there's some wishiness there. And then we're going to do a couple, you see how we have these like little fur tufts? We're going to do a couple tufts. So just put those tufts in. Here, drop a little of that red in there and that will take it out. Painting the whole fox. The zickers, I'm always angry. <laughs> There's a drop of red. Yeah. That's Mix it? that in. Mix that in. Okay. Yeah. Now, what you're going to do is I want you to just take some orange, still using your, your big brush, I want you to take the orange and then just start filling. So that was step one. That was putting in the shadows of the first part. Good job, you guys. And now we're just going to go across where the orange part is on the fox. So if you have your reference photo handy, that's like this area right here. And we're just going to start putting some orange in. So what I like to do is I like to fill my paintbrush with orange, start to lay it in. And then instead of grabbing more, I rinse my brush and then I spread it using water. This is pure, this is just the orange. Yeah, this is orange, and then I laid down the first color initially, and then I... We got the blue sneaking in our orange. Yeah, but it's screwing us up. Yep. Oh. Sorry, guys. Don't follow it slide this time. And then as you get closer to the bottom of the fox, for me personally, I like it when it's a light wash, so I add more water. So in watercolor, if you ever want the color to be lighter, instead of adding white to it like you would with traditional painting, you just add more water. So I want this to lighten up as I get to the bottom, so I'm just adding more water. The fox is growing his winter coat, that's why they look uh, whiter than Sarah's. Yeah. Just a heads up, their you colors... Go over these little splotches we did? Yeah, go over the splotches we did, let them kind of blend out. And just a heads up, I had to mix their colors for them because we ran out of orange, so their colors are going to be a little bit different over there. But mine is the orange that's in your kit. I didn't want to give them all the orange so we could still have orange. <laughs> and then when you get to the head part, you're going to leave this like area over here that's outlined on the nose. You're going to leave that white. Don't fill that in just yet. Do we do his ears and everything? You're going to do um, like this. So you're going to leave around his ears. What about this? What is about his eyebrow? His eyebrow, um, you're going to fill in. And then when you get to the forehead part, do the same thing where you're going to add a little bit of water so it's lighter. Yeah. Now what I like to do to help things blend out, because I don't necessarily like how blocky this is, right, where we did this initial shadow. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that it blends. So I'm going to work that again with more paint and blend this out. So that way it's not such a brown and then a hard line and then a soft orange. I added a little stronger orange in between. to help that blend out. Now, while this is still wet, and if yours has dried, you can rehydrate it by just doing a water wash over it, I'm gonna put some salt in. So I'm taking some table salt, and I'm just going to sprinkle in salt. Now, if your painting is dry, the salt really isn't going to do anything. So make sure you're putting it in wet areas. And I'm just gonna kinda of put it I'm not gonna put it on the forehead. I'm gonna stay um, like from the back of the eye on. I'm put in some salt. Here, here's some salt. Yeah. If you have different grains of salt, like different size grains, they're going to have different effects. 
What is it supposed to look like it's doing? So basically, you're not going to see it while it's wet, but when it dries, you're going to get this kind of texture <coughs> where it's kind of, it pushes the color out wherever the salt landed around it. It pushes it out. So you get almost these like explosions on the paper. Now, the next thing we're going to do. Sir, you've got some people saying that their paint is drying really fast and not blending well. Do you have some tips for them? Um, I'm, the only thing I can say is sometimes if you wait too long to add the water, then those hard lines are really hard. The lines are really hard to blend out. So maybe try working a little bit faster. And um, you can always rehydrate it if it if your paper is dry. Just just using water, bring it bring it wet again, and then drop in some salt. Now the other thing that I'm going to do, sorry, we need more orange. If you have these, these are childproof caps, so you have to press down on them. Just a, just a little heads up. People were asking that earlier. Yeah, so you gotta push down hard on them because they're childproof. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is using the salt that I put down, I'm going to actually take my finger and use and push the salt along the edges and I'm gonna get these wispy textures by just kind of using the thin grains of the salt. So I'm gonna go along the edge of my fox and kind of wisp my salt. Should it be wet? It should be a little bit wet and you can, if you wanna like, sometimes what I do is I actually put in more paint and then I'll put salt right on top of it, and then I'll wisp it if I want stronger color. But you'll get like this scratchy, rough texture going on. Yes. Yes. Where did you get this idea from? Um, I don't know if it's a thing. I just was painting this fox, and I thought, what if I just use my finger to spread this salt? And I did it, and I liked how it looked. So we call it Sarah Crayman. <laughs> I don't want to say that because that totally could be a real thing. And I'm not original at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't, I've never seen it done before, but it could be an actual thing. I don't know. <clears throat> what can the fox say? Now that stupid song is stuck in my head. That's okay. If you wrote em that song, embrace it. Story. Embrace it. Yeah, do we do it on the inside part? So I'm doing it a little bit on the inside part, but not too much, just a little bit. I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of our dog Harvey while we're doing this. I'm just channeling Harvey. Oh, okay. Our, our dog is kind of fox-like. But more like a rat. Yeah, maybe a little bit more ratish. I'm thinking of the tiger. Tiger. <laughs> he weighs like 10 pounds. Very nice. Okay, now what we're going to do... Because for me, I love color. I love it when there's just extra color going on. I want you to take your paintbrush. I want you to grab yellow. And I want you to start putting in yellow in some of these areas. We're we on six still? Yes. And the reason why we're still on six is because we're doing larger areas and it's so much easier to fill with a space. The, with the salt still in there, right? With the salt still in there. So you're not full on painting like this. You're kind of just dropping in this yellow on maybe some parts that are a little bit too light orange. So it's like here and there. And you can see already that just by adding that yellow to that orange, it's adding so much more vibrancy to that color. Yes. If you want your orange orange to be, you can mix some more red with that yellow over there to get a stronger orange if you want. All right. Okay. Wait, you're saying, what do you mean? She said put a couple drops of that red in this yellow. So then this add on would be more orange, you're saying? Just because his fox is reading pretty yellow, that the yellow drips adds he's more, dripping adds in. Adds like this in there? Yeah. Now with that yellow, I want you to kind of take this yellow and go across like the very bottom part of this. So where, so it's almost like a transition from orange to yellow. You're gonna kind of just like put that in there and then maybe a little bit on the bottom too. But your, your salt should be drying so you should be getting some funky textures going on. Now, it's going to react differently 
it's everybody's is going to look a little bit different. Um, if you want more, just put more color down and then drop in some more salt. But so sometimes, stuff we're putting over is kind of like covering some of that up, right? Yeah, some of this stuff is covering this. This is kind of multiple layers of like going in, putting in salt, painting on top. Yeah. And if it's not showing up too much, you can re-wet an area, drop in some fresh color, and then put in some salt. Now with that yellow, I'm gonna add some water to it so it's a light yellow. And I'm gonna do this nose tip here. The right side that we left bare that first time we went around. I'm gonna put that soft yellow in there. I also want to blend some of this out a little bit more on my top here. You go all the way down to the nose? To the top of the nose, mm hmm. Okay. So we should have some crazy colors going on, some crazy textures. And I think this is the fun part of this project is like, we're not focusing so much on that fur texture. We're really letting the salt and those kind of um, different colors do most of the work. I went in and I just kind of re-darkened this area right underneath my eye. And the brow a little bit. And then on the opposite side, if you see here in the reference photo, you see how there's like a darker mark right here because that's the start of the other brow. And so we're gonna put that in. Just a little bit darker side on that side. Okay, how's everybody doing? We're silent, we're focused. Plus, Carla wants to see the full, the finished painting. This one? Here, yeah. here it is. I don't, this is the only issue that I'm having right here, is that right there. Let me or see. keep spreading that. Here, let's do a check-in. Should I dump some of the salt off? Is it pretty? Uh, no. Don't dump it off yet. Okay. Over okay. Line. Yeah, so what I would just say, so this is looking really good, but I kind of just, cool. yeah, he's getting some great salt textures over here. I think those hints of color in there are really nice. So what I'm going to do though is I just feel like this is really strong and that's really strong and I want those to blend a little bit better. Okay. So I'm just going to take some more orange, put some down here. And I'm going to go all the way to this line. <laughs> Young man. <laughs> oh I'm going to go man. all the way to this line here. And that would kind of, that's going to kind of help that line problem that you were having. From the bottom all the way up? So From the I, top all the way down. Okay. I, yeah. And then I'm just going to kind of blend this out a little bit. Just by like watering it up. So I added some orange paint around it. And that just makes the transition smoother. That way it's not like just an even yellow and then a brown spot. If we add some orange in between there, it's going to be like yellow, orange, dark brown, which is a smoother transition. And then let's just do some orange around here. I didn't even ask you if it was okay if I painted on your painting. Is it okay, Jake? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <It's all> right <laughs> now that I've oh, done yeah, it, good. is that okay? I was thinking if you could blend that out just a little more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's good. And we can do some. I don't want to like disturb this area too much because we have some great textures going on. So I'm going to try and work around some salt. salt. I have non-functional salt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to wait for it to dry. Yeah. See how wet it is? You're not going to see what it's doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dry it, dry it off. There's your fox. Okay, let's look at Michael's. It's very wet. Okay, it is very wet. We have some great textures going on in here. Um, but just to give you a heads up, if you do, if you do paint 
and then salt and then water and then more paint and then more salt. It's just gonna kind of get like a muddy mess. Mm. <laughs> so you have to be this like. Isn't a good example of that. <laughs> it could happen. It could, it, happen. it could happen. I'm not saying that did happen. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. that happened right now. I'm it's just saying. It's a possibility. I'm just saying that you want to be a little bit um, like once you put the salt in, you kind of just like leave it patient alone. Patient is the word you're. Yeah, you got to be patient about it. <laughs> um, and because this is still so wet, we're not entirely sure how this salt is going to react because it's still. Well. Gonna react well. It's still wet, but one thing I am gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of orange down here. But I think your like touches of yellow are very vibrant, and they're kind of nice to see. But I think this, I think it's looking good. I don't know how the salt texture is gonna work how that's going to turn out on yours. So we just got to be patient just to see what that does. But besides that, it's looking good. Okay. We have Nicole's here and this is looking really nice. We have some good feather textures going on here. Some cool, is it okay if I do yes. this? Okay. Go some cool like wispies going on with the fox fur. We can do it more at the bottom. So I'm just really dragging the salt across down and you can press hard if you want to get like a darker color. Sometimes I just like finger paint almost with salt on my hand still. And you're just getting some oh. rough. No Michael, <laughs> Michael, no more salt. <laughs> and I think this is looking really nice. I'm going to add a little bit more color around here. I know that wasn't blending very well. So what I like to do always is like, so we have some decent blending, but what's happening here is this is looking like an even wash and then this outlined area is kind of sticking out. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is go in between there and just drop in some color. And we like to drop in color because we live on the edge. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> don't worry you guys if you don't get it no it's it's a let's make art thing where we she live on the edge i say it once a video because we live on the edge i'm going to put in a little bit of shadow in here <laughs> and i want a little bit more yellow in here so at the bottom what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to drop in some strong yellow, just like, and it doesn't have to, you like kind of drop it in and then you softly spread it, but it's just like hints. I think it just adds. We have strong yellow if you want it. Depth. I have some strong, I have some strong yellow. Strong contest, not a pair of yellow. Maybe a little at the what bottom. Is it? What do you get? But you see how by adding that yellow, it already your fox is like I love it. brightening up more. It's it's having a little bit more dimension. And you can add water to that and lighten that up. Okay. And maybe one <laughs> we're gonna have Halloween treats here going on. Okay. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Another thing that you can do, and if you don't have salt, just in case, is instead of dropping in salt, you can just drop in water. And the water itself will also make really interesting textures and things going on on your fox. So, um, and maybe if you want to try that as well, I'm feeling a little crazy. It might have dried too much, but I'm just going to put in some water drops. And that's also going to have mm -hmm. some cool effects. So really just like allow yourself to play, put some stuff in. Yeah. So you okay. Avoid your salt when you're water uh, I didn't avoid my salt. I don't think there's a way to do that, but uh, don't put more salt in on the top right now. <laughs> just, oh. just leave that alone. <laughs> just leave that, that alone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just <laughs> have like a salty, soppy mess. Okay, if you get a little drip pick it up 
with a paper towel. It will at least lighten some of it. What about like a this size drip? <laughs> your fox is beautiful, okay? Fox Love it. Drip. Love your fox. fox. Size. Mess. You guys, that was step two, and that was probably one of the more difficult steps. So you're doing great. You're, just stick with me. And one thing, the reason why I have multiple people on here painting with me is because I want you to see we are all painting the same thing. We are all using similar colors, <laughs> but they all look different. And that's because we have different styles and different brush strokes and different pressures. But don't be mad at your own style because that's what makes it yours. So when you we'll, say don't get salty. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I would say. Don't get salty with your own style, okay? Because it's great. Now we're gonna move on to step three, which is the dark parts. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna start off with is rinse your brush. Same size. Same size, still using your six or your larger brush. I didn't have enough sixes to go around, so we're kind of, we're making it work. We're a make it work kind of people. All right, now I'm gonna start with the ears. Now, the thing that we're gonna do with the ears is we're gonna start off with the blue and then we're gonna have it fade into the black. And the reason why I wanna do this is because sometimes black isn't just pure black. Sometimes there's like a color undertone to it, which is why there's like a purpley black or a blue black or a red black, that kind of thing. So, and when you add another color to black, it gives it more dimension. So, just go ahead and take your blue. Start at the bottom of the ear where it kind of meets with the brown. If it overlaps a little bit, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's just going to make like a muddy color. Hmm. Vicky wants to know if the salt's going to come off the paint once it's dry. The salt, you can wipe it off once it's totally dry, but make sure it's completely dry so it's, and not wet. Oh, shoot, it's like really blue. Okay. I was like, what? So it's, it's pretty blue. Then I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to grab black. And I'm going to start at the top here. And then I'm going to work my way down. And then I'm going to leave, see how there's like this space in between. I'm leaving a little white space in between the blue and the black. I'm going to slightly rinse my brush. So just like a dip in the water, hit it off the cup. And then I'm going to blend these two together. So at the bottom, you should have a stronger blue color. If you don't like how strong this blue is, if that's too strong for you, then keep this black going down and, and it will kind of desaturate that blue. And then, while it's wet, because you can never have enough salt. Wait, you dip, so you dip in the water and then, mm -hmm. and and then, then combine them? Combine them, blend okay. between the two. Oh, okay, a reason why your salt might be, if you're adding your salt onto this part and your paper is super wet that it's a pool of water, then the salt is not gonna work the same. It's almost like oh. a thin. That's me too. No, yours should like be okay. That. This one should work just fine. Yeah. So I would maybe pick up some of this water with your paper towel. Pick up some of that water because if it's too wet, then the salt's just going to sit there. It's not going to react the same. So it's almost like a thin layer of water with strong color is where I feel like the salt works best, personally. Just look over, Michael's just salting everything. <laughs> That's fine. You really love salt. That's okay. You want salt? I just want it to work a little bit. Well, it. You just gotta let it be, honey. You gotta let it be. Those are words of wisdom. Let it be. Now, I'm gonna go over the black tip one more time to really make sure it's dark at that tip. Also, what you can do is on the left side, this is not a perfectly smooth ear, it has fur. So you can take your brush and kind of just do little wisps off, just one or two, don't go, don't go too crazy, just little one or two wisps off the ear. On the, this ear that we're on right now? Yeah, and I'm doing it on both Going sides. Upwards, Going yeah. upwards. Okay. So you see how I have little wisps. Yep. Wisps. Beautiful. Gorgeous. My ear keeps getting taller. That's okay. <laughs> you just adjust to it. And I'm going to do a little bit of a black tip on the other side. I'm just going to go down 
like, I don't know, quarter of an inch, half an inch. On the other ear or on the other side? On the, on the same ear, other side. I didn't lay down water first on that ear, but you absolutely can do that. You can lay the water first down and then drop in color. I put, I put them down simultaneously. But either one works just fine. That, there's not a wrong way to do that. Okay, and we're gonna do the next ear, same thing. Pick up some blue. Start at the base of the ear. Okay. You call this blue or blue? What? Pick up some blue. Blue? Blue. Blue. Am I saying it weird? No. Okay. At least it's not Azure. Yeah. <laughs> we had a. I wasn't sure how to say so that word. All the way up, like filling this whole side up to the. I'm going like kind of up to where it, uh, it meets the other ear, like on the left hand side. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Beautiful. Okay. Sorry. And then I start at the top with the black. You can do a couple wispies here. And then I leave a, a thin white space in between, kind of rinse my brush, and then blend that baby together. I think Al's calling me right now. We have to take that. And if you want to salt this one too, feel free. I'm going to calm down on the salt, but what? I was just waiting to see how much salt I had. <laughs> yeah, if you want to salt this one. <laughs> He's going to wait till I'm turned oh, away and then just like take the whole thing. And I just wanted a stronger pop of blue, so I added in a little bit more after I blended. You don't have to do that. You're free to play with it. drywall mud in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Add some that, see what that does. Let's just throw that in there. It's gonna dry it right out. Okay. Do you go down on the other side of this one too? No. All right. The the right side of this ear don't outline with black. Okay, we're gonna move on to the inside of the ear. And that's just like a dark brown or like a black if you want. Let's bring some of this back. If paint dries on your palette, you can bring it back just using water. And I'm gonna mix a little bit more black in there to get it nice and dark. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I have my brown mixed on my palette and I'm just going to take water, so it's just my brush and water, and I'm going to just use water to fill in this kind of middle of the ear area. And then I'm gonna drop in the color. into the water. Now the water isn't going to be totally clear because our water is dirty from painting, but it doesn't totally matter. So it's where just do you like drop it in exactly? where you put the water down. I mean, does it matter like on the inner part or the outer part? It doesn't matter. And if it's not spreading, you can just use your brush to spread it. Why do you do that? Do what? Add the water first. Because then the color will kind of disperse on its own and you can get some really interesting like edges and mm -hmm. stuff. And then it like has a different, you see how it almost has like, how it's bleeding out, mm -hmm. has like a different ending and it's not perfectly, it like has a more organic edge. Wait, this, what color is this, brown? Brown or I'm gonna put a little bit of black in there to darken it up. And if it's not spreading how you like, you can help it, push it just a little bit. This front edge should be like flat, straight? Um, the front edge, if you look at the reference photo, the front edge gets really, really muddy. Okay. So it's kind of straight, but we're gonna go back in and kind of blend these two areas together for that white fur. So don't, don't stress if your edge is straight or a little, mine's not totally straight, it has a little bit of um, wonkiness. You're is good the at only... this. Yeah, you're really good at this. <laughs> you stop it. <laughs> you really stop it. <laughs> I, can't tell, I can't tell if you're making fun of no, me I or like if your you're... painting. <laughs> okay. 
let's move on. Let's let's I'm move just on. I'm looking at yours. I'm not comparing. You're no, not I'm comparing. Not, I'm actually not comparing. I'm looking at yours. Appreciating the strengths of hers. Lovingly and yeah. the weaknesses of mine. Oh, don't focus on the that. The lesser strengths of mine. <laughs> you can only be on my show if you're positive, Michael. I am positive. <laughs> okay, we're going to move to the nose. Now you'll see the nose is in two parts here. The bottom part is dark and the top part is kind of like a light gray. And the reason why we do that is because it's how the light is hitting it. So the light source is kind of coming from above. So the tip of the nose is highlighted and then the underneath part of our nose, if you look at even our own noses, it's going underneath away from us. So it's shattered, shadowed. So the bottom part of this nose is going to be dark. So we're gonna take just black, we're gonna fill in that bottom part. And I'm gonna do the right side of the nose. And does it go up this way? What way? Do you wanna keep, do you wanna put that there? Is that yeah. helpful for you? Got it, yeah. Okay. And then we're just gonna leave that. I'm not gonna try and add the gray part right now because this is really wet. So if I try to put gray in, then this line would blend together with that gray part. It would just bleed out. Mm -hmm. And we want it to stay kind of a tighter line. So we're gonna wait for that to dry before we add the other part of the nose. We are going to move on to the other side. I mean, to the mouth. This is where your thin lines mm -hmm. come in handy, you guys. Mm -hmm. Take out your two. Jake, oh, this is your you. moment. I got you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying. Okay. Get your brush. Is that Al? Yeah, I think that's Al. Pick it up. Is it Al? I don't think it's Al. Is that Al? Kansas City? He is in Kansas City number. Should I? Is it so rude if I answer? But he never. He knows I'm busy Tuesday nights. He started this. Yeah, that's not so. He's fine. Okay. I will decline it one more time. If he calls a third time, I'm answering it. Okay. <laughs> you heard it here from me. Okay. So I'm kind of moving my paintbrush back and forth, kind of sandwiching it on my pan so I get a thinner line. And I'm just going to follow the mouth line, just a nice thin line. There's so much salt on my paper. <laughs> This line got shaky, but I feel like, you know, he's just a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is There's what's Al. Going on. Were you calling? <laughs> Were you calling me? <laughs> oh, he yeah, just walked hey. into the building. He forgot. Hey. <laughs> okay. Um, somebody Please. asked, um, are the foxes drawn freehand? No, they're not. You can get the outline on our website, letsmakeart.com. Just find the fox kit. Okay, we're also gonna let that dry for a second because we're doing the mouth. Al, do you wanna come on and say hi? Come <laughs> yeah, back here. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? There's I Al. I know. And I'm like, Al is calling me, but he knows I'm doing this Tuesday like, no, night. Like, he started this. Hi. 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 Okay. Because well, I had to get a binder, but I didn't want to come up. <laughs> anyway. Okay, well, thanks for stopping in. See We're you painting. Next time. <laughs> um, somebody asked, do you hold a pen pencil the same way you hold your paintbrush? I do. The same way I hold my paintbrush is the same way I hold my pencil. So if you're not sure how to hold it, that's what I do. But do whatever feels comfortable to you. Some people hold their brush differently, it's, there's nothing wrong with whatever feels right. Mm. <laughs> is, Brock, is Brock on mic tonight? Yeah, Brock's yeah, mic. Oh, nice, man. All right, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now we're going to do the shadowed part of the two? fur on our fox. I'm going to stay with my six, but if you want to do your two, if you like the smaller brush better, feel free. Okay? I'm going to take this back so I can see you just where I start. On it. 
Yeah, I'm like, okay. Michael's going crazy with that paint and salt. Let's move that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of my blue and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my black. So it's like a gray color going on here, like a blue gray. Blue gray. Oh yeah. Our black is very Would you gray. call it stormy gray? Yeah. So you're gonna take some of this gray and you're gonna do some of those same wispies. We're gonna start at the top, right here, kind of right underneath the neck. We're gonna start putting in, and you can then also follow the wispies that we outlined. There's no wispies outlined on Oh, we I'm sorry. We didn't do the wispies yet. Wait. What, what? We're doing the wispies right now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the re we wanted the darkest at the top of the neck, right here. And the reason why we want that the darkest is because the head itself is casting a shadow on that fur. So even though it's fur, it's like gray from the shadow. So we're gonna put in a few wispies, we're gonna make it dark, and then I want you to clean your brush, add water, and blend those out, similar to what we did in our warm up with that color range. Oh no, I touched the nose. That's okay, just okay, wipe your paper out. How, where do I blend it up to this line right here? So bl blend it, yeah, you can blend it up to this outline right here. And I'm just whisking all over or just in the like, five spots? You're, you're whisping at the top and then in the like five outlined areas. Whisping, just wisp, 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 wisp. I tell them. And then if you want yours to have more of a blue tone, I know in the original we have lots of blue going on. I'm going to add just a little bit more blue. So I like to add a couple wisps and then I just use water and kind of blend those out a little bit. And remember, as it gets down to the bottom, we want it to get lighter. And that's because we're, we have like a funky, weird edge at the bottom. Like our fox isn't perfectly go off our page, so it's almost like the fox is fading away in this painting, you know? Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is we're gonna use more salt. Michael? Mm -hmm. You ready? So, I'm gonna put some salt Time out. What? Well, Your mic just died. My mic died? Yeah. But people need to hear what you have to say. Batteries are dead because you sat on batteries. I think there's some over there. One, uh, one moment. It's definitely flashing. I'm going to sacrifice, sacrifice myself. Sexy dancing for it. We we good? Can you hear me? Tisting, tisting. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Sorry guys. I thought I switched the batteries on the mic. I guess I didn't. Sorry about that. Okay, so I put in salt. And this one it's not gonna have a strong effect because this is a really light wash. I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on my finger. And then I'm going to wisp it out. Wisp it out. Now wisp it out. <laughs> wisp it out. So I'm using now the same like, like, like blue gray. Going, like all the way up to the like right by the mouth. Yeah. Just not touching the mouth yet. Not touching the mouth. And it gets lighter as it gets closer to the mouth. So we're kind of just Yep, and then, so the salt there, you're basically just using the salt for texture at this point, like being able to move these wispies, not necessarily for um, like the same explosions that we did on the wash. So you just, we're hand, we're hand painting some fur textures here. Uh, now while you're doing that, yeah. there's been some questions about, it, does the type of salt matter? I don't know the answer to that. Only I, kosher. I just use table salt and sometimes this salt. I just use what I have in my cupboard. 
Um, my, my fox no, I dip just, it in my paint. In blue? Yeah, blue gray. And then you just down? And then I, I start at the top and I wisp my way down. So it's gonna get really messy and muddy and furry weird and that's okay. My fox has a very fat neck. Wait, I love, I love furry there. nets. Oh, <laughs> 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 Think of the children. I love the furry nets. This is fun. Yeah, this the is salt with the. It's just it's supposed to be like this fun. I don't know. Takes you back to when you could finger paint. You know. Uh, Rayana, Rayana. But. Wants oh. to know if you're using the same paper from the kits as. Are you using the paper that's in the kits? I am using the paper that's in your in the kits. It's called Canson watercolor paper, 140 weight, 140 pound is the weight. <laughs> and uh, yes, I'm using the same paper you have. It's cold press, right? Yeah. yeah, cold press. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I like how blue your fur is. Just to hide the fact that it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Just winter coat. It's pretty cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> that looks good. That looks good. Jake, how are you doing? I'm, I am. It's looking good. I'm going to say jealous of Jake's because I took an what? oath. What? Yeah. So but shadow wise? Yeah. Are you supposed to yeah, have more, more here more because it's further yeah, back? Yeah. So shadow wise, in terms of value, the darkest part is going to be right here. Right at like, could you call this the nape of the neck? Is that the t right term? It's like right. It's Adam's apple. It's right at the top of the neck. That's where it's going to be the darkest. So if you want a little bit more color. But it has my fingerprints on it. To be honest. Mm -hmm. Use so more salt. Clearly and figuratively. So Every. I want to remind you to use the rough side of the paper, not the smooth side. Use the rough side of the paper. But if it if it's in your kit, it should be rough side no. up. That's how. Now that we're starting. Okay. <laughs> now that we're done. Now that we're getting, now we're getting into the love side, guys. You. Okay, we're gonna see everybody. The, the girl that asked, is this the same paper? This is Nicole's. We have awesome texture going on here with her fur. We have some cool salt textures on the top. Your ear transitions look great. I think it's looking really awesome. You should be proud. This is fun. It's going great. Okay, this is Michael's. It's more of a wolf. Yours is really wolfy. This no, is like a wolf boxy. fox. He has a fat neck. Because look at that, look at that look mane. At look at the salt. mane. I know. <laughs> it's so glittery the from the salt. It, 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 you meat. know what? You could probably live off of this for a little bit. Um, <laughs> or <it's what>? beer. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I <can't laughs> the um, I think the, the blue. Salt. I think the blue colors in his fur are really nice. I really like them. I think the different textures you have up here is looking really good. If anything, if you add a lot of salt like this, like a ton, it's going to actually lift a lot of color out, which is why his orange is not as vibrant as the other, as the other ones because there's just a little bit too much salt. But that's not a bad thing because you're getting some interesting textures here. And if that bothers you too much, let it dry, wipe all the salt off, and then just do another wash of color. And that will bring that vibrancy back up. It's just a dusty fox. It's, just, it's like a dust. He's yeah. aged and wizened. <laughs> yes. He's wizened fox. Man. Okay, this is Jake's. He's got like a flame, man. This flame. is looking really nice. You can oh. see the salt work on his. Yeah, his salt looks so good. Your salt's on point. I I, it said one tablespoon, I added one tablespoon. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Your fur is looking nice. The only thing I would do is maybe add a couple. See how you have these dark wispies here? Mm -hmm. That's nice. I want them a little bit more at the top because that's actually where it's supposed to be the darkest. Okay. So add a couple of those wispies at the top and we're good. Got it. Good? Got it. Let's keep going, guys. You're doing great. You're doing so awesome. I can't wait to see how they turn out. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is there's like a little shadow on the mouth here. We're going to start putting in the shadows on the mouth because right now they're just like white and we, we need to add some color in there to get some dimension. So I'm going to take a little bit of brown. It's like a gray brown. I mix a little bit of brown with black. So it's like a gray brown we have going on here. And right here, so like, um, I don't know, how far, 
How can I describe where this is? Between eye between and nose. Head. Between, so from the chin to the nose, right in the middle, on the top lip, you're gonna put in brown, and then you're going to rinse your brush and blend it out like how we did on our warm up on both sides. But leave a little bit of a white space. You can see I kind of have it outlined where you should stop with that blending because we do want a little bit of a white spot right by that nose. And then after you blend it out, you might blend it out so much that you lost that dark spot. So go back in and put that dark spot back in. And then just continue this blending kind of out to the side. And the reason why we're doing this, yeah, and the reason why we're doing this is because on dogs' mouths or foxes' mouths, they have a shape to them. It's not totally flat. It kind of rounds out. Mm -hmm. It rounds out and then it goes out again. So it goes out and in and out, and that's just the shape of their mouth. And so that's what this shadow is trying to accomplish, that the side of the mouth is not totally flat. It's rounding out, going back in, and then going back out. So that's why we're putting a little bit of a shadow in there, just to add a little bit of depth. Are you trying to avoid the mouth? Like the bottom part, the, the black line? Yeah. Um, I'm not totally avoiding that. I'm, I'm actually going all the way to that. Okay. Do I want to pull it up into the orange part? You can pull it up into the orange part a little bit, yes. And that just might be a little too water heavy. So you can soak up some water with your paper towel. I want it to be swirly. Okay, then leave it. That's exactly what you would do then. So you're going to spot a little darker? Yeah. Okay, so we have like a shadow on the top part and now we're going to add a shadow on the bottom part of our mouth line. And we're just going to do that by grabbing some gray, some black and having water mixed in so it's kind of a gray. And I'm just gonna fill in this bottom part of my mouth using that kind of gray color. Your fox looks incredibly fierce. My fox is looking pretty fierce. It's like Todd from the Fox and the Hound. Oh, Todd. Yep, the very nice. And then if you have enough, yeah, the hole underneath is that gray. And can I borrow mm -hmm. yours? And then what I want you to do, if your, my black line wasn't thick enough, so I couldn't show you, but if your black line is dark enough, you could actually pull from the black line and pull down. And that's good because right underneath that line is gonna be the most shadowed um, because that's where that mouth line goes in. So pull some of that black down if you can. I may or may not be getting a mustache in that line. Mine's got like a huge underbite. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs with underbites are the cutest though. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. He's derpy. He's a little derpy. <laughs> I love it. Because his neck is so fat, that's actually his dog double chin. There we go. I actually love the colors that are going on right there. Thank you. Okay, you guys, you're doing great. I know there's lots of little steps in here, but stay with me. You're doing awesome. Now we're gonna do the gray part on our nose. For this, I'm actually just going to slightly moisten my paintbrush and pull from the black I originally laid down to do the bottom part and just fill it in. I don't wanna work it back and forth too much because then I would end up pulling all of the black out of that part. So just do like one or one swipe if that's enough. Maybe, Blend it more. maybe just a little bit more. Mine got really dry. You just gotta work it. You don't want a dry fox nose. Work it. Should I add more black? Let's let that dry and then see how that does. If you if you pull if you end up pulling too much, um, then you might have to go back in and redefine that black line. Not a big deal. Just do it when it's dry. Uh, um, wait, am I supposed to put a black line on the top up there? 
Uh, yes, but that's when it's dry. That's okay, a letter, letter, that's a detail. Let it be. Let it be. What about this empty white hole? That's right next to, to it. There. That's supposed to be there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Great. That empty white hole that you said with such a disdain is part of the pail. <laughs> <laughs> what is this white hole? Okay. So now we're gonna fill in the white fur that are on the ears. So this is where it gets kind of funny because you think that because it's white on the fox, it has to be totally white, but it's, it's not true. It has shadow, it has shape, so it has a little bit of color to it. And I'm actually just gonna pull from this color that we already put down. I'm just gonna kind of work that back and forth, just a little. So you're gonna kinda do, up to the do, top, do, 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 do. The whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. And same thing on the other side. If I grab some of that black. Yeah, me. grab a little bit of that black. It should turn like a gray. Okay. okay let's make art ghost. Make art. Now we're going to do the black part around the eyeball on the eye. Oh, wait, you did the other ear too, right? I did the other ear, yes. So take your round two. Let me go know if I'm going too fast. Nope. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> we're <good>. sweating. <laughs> no, as he's furiously trying to. <laughs> this, this, this is fine. Okay. I'm going to use my two because it's smaller, easier for me to work with. And we're just going to fill in the black part around the eyeball. So pick up some black. Now when I was filling in my orange, I kind of got a little crazy and I went over my line. But since we're adding painting black over it, it's not a huge deal. So you're just going to... This is the two? Yeah. This is the two, yes. And it's on the back. And we're just adding an eyeliner? Mm. Basically, it's an eyeliner. Okay, what's one of those? This is more of an emo fox. This fox has a lot of feelings. <laughs> this is, so we're outlining good. the whole eye. So you're basically, you see this black part? Yeah, okay. That's what we're filling in. Right. Yeah, I got a little wild with my orange in there. I did too, but we're covering it in black, so it's not a huge deal. Do I need to cover all of my orange if I want over the line? Uh, I covered it. Um, like, see how deep? That's a pretty hard to pull. Here, let me like see. Bottom one. <clears throat> Let's like, cover the, like, come mm -hmm. up to that. So, what I would do is just, yeah. Kind of. Lean on me. Lean on me. And don't breathe during this part, right? There you go. Yeah, don't breathe during this. Hold your breath. Okay. Somebody asked what kind of paper I use. This is Canson watercolor paper, cold press, 140 pound. Great. Rough side. Use the rough side. side. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to let that dry because we are on our last, last step, which is the eyeball and the details. Now, the reason why we're not going straight into the color of the eyeball right now is because this black is wet, so if we were to try and put in a different color, it would get muddy and kind of bleed out everywhere. So, uh, what we can do in our spare time here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some dark orange. Actually, let me take this. And I'm just going to put in a couple more tufts on my fur. A couple more like little shadow shading parts. So some wisps. Just a few. <laughs> so sorry. You ruined my morning. <laughs> <laughs> on my brush Did you hear how worried he was? Yeah, he's like, no, 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 no. no. I was like, that's a beautiful orange. Let me get right in the middle. <laughs> Let me get a big bit of that. So just a, just a couple here and there. 
just for a little bit of uh, shadow depth and dimension. So just wisp, wisp, wisp. If they're too strong, like this one might have been a little bit too strong, I'm just going to blend it out just a little bit. Sarah, what do you find that spending money on a good paintbrush gets you? So usually when you spend money on a nicer paintbrush, um, it just keeps longer. And especially with rounds, you want to keep that nice tip as tight as you can for as long as you can. And so good paintbrushes will keep their form a lot better and they'll last you longer. And like super cheap paintbrushes, like the bristles will like fall out while you're painting a lot and that kind of stuff. But just a little tip, you don't want to keep your paintbrushes in the water while you're painting. If you're not using that size brush while you're painting, rinse it or just keep it on your paper towel. Because if you keep it in the water for a long period of time, it would, it's actually going to change the shape of the bristles. Sarah, if you yeah. had to pick, mm -hmm. which country do you think has nailed food? Oh, what country do I think has nailed food? Mm -hmm. Like, they got that. I, I have two. I got a table tie. You go first. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I feel like the standard answers are like Italy. No, yeah. either, no. Italy? One. What? One. What? Off the what? Bat. Gelato? Thailand. Nailed food. No. Mexico. Nailed food. When have you not okay. been in the mood for Thai? When have you not been in the mood That's for true. Pizza? Yeah. All right. See? I'll add That's a little more. Right okay, I we're will. waiting for our eye to dry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You now. Can you nose now? What? Yeah, you can redo the, if you need to redo the line on your nose, now is the time to do it. Just like tracing the back side of the nose. My nose is still sopping. If your nose is still sopping, you can pick it up with a paper towel or you just be patient, you let that dry. You know, I like Mexican food because it's usually self-contained too, like a burrito is its own vessel. That's true. You know, you can just yeah, go. I mean, same with a quesadilla and a taco. I'm going to redo my mouth line, but keep talking about food. Why aren't you talking about important things? With <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be saucy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Or the salty. <laughs> There's so much so salt, cool. it's like soaking into me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we're going to do the pupil of the eye. That's like, so in your eye, we have like the black part. Now inside of the black part is a tiny, tiny little circle. And you want to leave that white because that is the glare on an eyeball. The reason why there's a glare on an eyeball is because eyeballs are wet. And so they leave a glare when light is hitting them. So I'm going to go in and work around that tiny, tiny white and put in the black part of the pupil. Now, where you put the pupil is going to um, tell the viewer where the fox is looking. So if you want the fox to be looking a little bit more forward, you're going to move the pupil a little bit more towards the edge of the eyeball. If you want it looking back, then you move the pupil back closer to the back of the eye. And it's the same for humans, right? Like wherever my, if I'm looking forward, my pupil's here. If I'm looking back, my pupil is that way. Does that make sense? So I'm kind of putting mine like at the top, kind of in the middle or a little bit towards the front. And don't worry, when you put in the pupil, it's going to look funny because we haven't colored in the rest of the eye. It's going to look like your fox is like... Like <laughs> don't, what? Like... Okay. Jake, did you see that? Yeah, that was good. You got it? Wait, let me do it. <laughs> Scared. Don't stress. Nervous. It's just because we haven't filled in the color. Once you put in that color, it's going to relax the eye and it's going to look more like a normal eyeball. I just couldn't, I couldn't venture out. I like, what? What? I know, it's good. Oh, wait, <laughs> is this line supposed to come down? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mine is so blue and red, I'm going to submit it to Firefox. Maybe yeah, Firefox, Firefox is like, we just found a logo. Mozilla. Michael Cray's painting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have to let that dry before we do the other part of the eyeball. So if there's anything else you want to fix on your fox, now's the time. If you have 
Um, maybe you want to blend this area a little bit more together so it's a smoother transition. If you have like white paint or a white section right there, blend that out. Blend those out together. I'm going to post this on Reddit. Good. That's how you know I love you. <laughs> yeah, Reddit is sometimes mean. Okay. Or you can post it on our Facebook group. We have one of those. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What is our Facebook group called, Sarah? Let's make art together. Oh man. Join it and share your work and feel the love. I'm also going to, while I'm just waiting for this to dry, I'm just going to put in some yellow again because I just love doing that. I'm thinking you need darker than that. A little bit more salt, Michael. <laughs> Michael, you're gonna do more salt? I'm not. I'm not gonna stop you. It's your painting. It's your life. <laughs> Rock tattled on me. It's your life. <laughs> it's your life. It's your if painting. You just cut up a some potato cream. and put it. Just cream. Add some cream, smooth out. Channel my inner Mexican food lover and put lime on it. We just watched a show called Chef's Table. No. Acid, fat, oh, salt. Oh, acid, fat, yeah, salt, heat. That's a great show. What? If you like where cooking shows. Where, where, who? Where they were making those beautiful foods, pastas and such. Oh, are you still on Italy? Okay. 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 All right. Whatever we were like, oh, what about Italy? You're like, oh. ew, no, ew. <laughs> I was like, what? wait, wait, whoa, wait. Sue, Sue wants to know if you're putting salt in the eye. No, I am not Sue, but maybe I should. <laughs> maybe. Maybe you will now. <laughs> and Tamara said to talk about the postcard a little. And while I'm waiting for this to dry, we totally have time to do that. Uh, if you are doing the subscription boxes, you will have noticed that there is a little watercolor postcard <coughs> and an informational card in there. And that's called Let's Make Art Matter. And what we do is we pick somebody every month that changes and we give you a postcard that's addressed to them and then we paint a picture for them and send it to them. Now, you can paint whatever you want on it, um, but if you don't know really what to paint, then I do a live tutorial for it, which is what we're gonna do next Tuesday night. So um, that's what that's for. It's literally my favorite part of the subscription box. It's a great way to just serve people and spread love and art, and it's really fun. So if you were to do anything out of the box, I hope that you do the postcard, because it's just good. It's just good to do something good. Okay, Michael, yours is too wet, so don't do this part. You have to wait for yours to dry. Okay. I think yours is ready. Jake, does your black look pretty dry? Yep. Okay, <laughs> now we're gonna do the eyeball. So for the eyeball, I'm gonna start off with taking a little bit of orange and mixing it to get like a dark orange. So I'm mixing it with a little bit of black, but just a little to get a dark orange. And that's gonna be the back part of my eyeball. Oh <laughs> Don't be hard on yourself, Jake. Ooh. Mixing takes yeah, practice. Like, like straight to green. I was like, no, nah, it's not annoying. <laughs> if I blow on this, will it speed it up? Maybe. Should I put some salt on it? Too? Do it. <laughs> yeah, just. Softly, <laughs> soft, gently. So I did, I did this dark orange on the back part of the eyeball and the very top of the front part. And the reason why we're doing this is because eyeballs themselves have value change. They're rounded. So if it's going, this is going kind of more towards the corner, it's being shaded, so that's going to be a darker orange. Like now, the back part towards the black? Towards the left. The left part. Okay, is this over? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to take some yellow. So I have this section here right now. Now, just to give you a heads up, there is gonna be a white section in between the colored eyeball and the black. Just leave that white for now, okay? So ignore this middle section, and we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna put in some yellow. It's cool to make a fox with a green eye. It would be cool mm -hmm. to make a fox with a green eye. Or like a light blue, like an ice blue eye. Ooh, like a husky eye. Like a husky a eye. Yeah, that would be cool. I'm doing Can we start it. Over? Somebody do it. I'm doing it. Brock, I mean, Michael, do it. Okay. What side of the paper? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong side. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think. Yeah. 
You okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. Should I put my white spot's kind of big? Should I like push my eye a little bit over? Let me see. Gonna make him look confused. No, I think your white spot is great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a good looking box, Jacob. It is a good looking oh. box. Okay, now we're gonna just blow on that a little bit. Get that to dry. <laughs> should should it whistle? <laughs> like maybe do a do a little blow with a little bit of whistle in it. Ooh, mine's really wet. <laughs> okay. You guys, we're having too much fun here. <laughs> what was that? Just been done. <laughs> <laughs> so this white part that we have, we actually want to make that gray because how it's reading right now is like the white of the eyeball and so it's still looking back. So all you need to do is just take this black paint that we use and spread it towards this white and just kind of make it gray. And that's going to take away a little bit that look of it looking behind us. But not all the way to the eye? All the way to the colored part. All the way to the colored part gets turned gray. It's going to be gray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then my glare I think is a little bit too big so I'm going to, I'm going to bring it in just a little bit. I'm going to make it smaller. And you just do what feels right to you, to your painting. I'm going to drop in a little bit more yellow on my actual eyeball because I want some brighter colors. I swear when you're doing this, like, you're like, this is not right. But then I think maybe tomorrow I'll be like, oh, that looks fine. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when you're painting and you're like so close to it, you can't back up from it. You're like, this is just looking funny. But then you like go to bed, you wake up the next morning and you're like, you know what? I made that and that's oh, pretty, pretty darn cool. It. Yeah. It's a cute fox. You, it, know? you know what? That fox has personality and I like him. We should name our foxes. Mine is... Tucker Carlson. Yours is Tucker Carlson? No, I think that's a dude on the news. Okay, mine is going to be... <laughs> Hmm. I, I always want to do like an F name. Frida the Fox. Oh, I would do a flower crown if I was doing Frida the Fox. You're very unibrow. You didn't like Felicity last time. I did not like that. What? Um, you don't like that name? I think of American Girl Bell. Oh, okay. I get that. <laughs> I'm going to do Frederick. This is my fox, <laughs> Frederick the Fox. Michael, what's your fox's name? No, you can't be the Fred, same. Fred, Fred, <laughs> I'm Frederick. They don't have to be. This is your fox. It's your life. Ferranda. Ferranda. I kind of like Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Someone Ferd suggested Salty the Fox. Salty the Fox. Oh, Michael, that should be yours. <laughs> yeah. salty. Their name fox is. name is Splotch. Franz. Fitzwill. Oh, Franz. What an excellent Franz. name. Franz. Oh, Franz. 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 Nicole, what's the name of your fox? My the first thing that came to mind was Sasha. Oh, mm. yeah, but Sasha Fierce, totally. No, it doesn't have to be an F. <laughs> Nicole, this is your life. You can name your fox whatever you want. My life. This is fun. Okay, you guys, that was the last step in our fox. We did it. Woo! So we're Woo! ready to do our close-up so you guys can see Wait, I need them. how everybody oh. said, even if it's not done. Farley. <laughs> Farley, that's a good Farley. name. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. What, what? What? This right here? Okay. Yeah. That's supposed to be black. Here, let me see yours. Eye. Let me see yours. My eye hole is blue. It's kind of ocular cancer. That's supposed to be more black, huh? Yeah, it's supposed to be a little bit more gray. Okay. So I'm just going to make that for you. Don't cut. Don't cut. There you go. Look at that spooky eye. Oh my. All right. Okay, we're gonna hold it up and we're gonna do a slow pan so you guys can see so our foxes. Off of this point, huh? Yes, and I can go over how to do that after we do the. It's like a shank. Yeah. Okay, hold it up towards this camera. Brock will we'll do a slow pan. We can see everybody's. Oh, look at those foxes. They also look. Also, the paintings are pretty good too. <laughs> Brock, you stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Talking about me and Jake. I know. Yeah, easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. So fun. Good job, yeah. everybody. Look how good it is. Wow. It
like, it's fun to see everyone's amazing. personality. It's so oh, fun. Blue eyes. Yeah, Michael did a blue eye. It looks so good. I love it. Michael, that was a good choice. Thank you. You're welcome. Wasn't my idea. Okay, if you want to get the salt off, it's really scary, like scraping, because if some paint is wet, it's going to get on the white part. So sometimes what I like to do is I just hit it. Oh if your painting is wet, don't do this. Uh, Wait until well, it's dry. Okay. <laughs> I'm a very wet painter. Yeah, mine's. Or you can gently rub it off to loosen it. Gently rub it off and then hit it. Just, I mean, can you just, just leave the salt on though, too? I, most of the time, honestly, I just leave the salt on. Lick it later? Just... I snack on it while I paint other things. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She does sugar painting, salt painting. Salt, sugar. I wonder what sugar no, would do. Bacon fat painting. <laughs> I wonder what it would do. I'm going to try it. I'm going to play with sugar and see what that does. It Probably would nothing. It would dissolve. Oh, would it? Yeah. Okay. He's a scientist, so I believe him. Okay. I'm a videographer. Okay, you guys. Thank you so much for painting this with me. This was such a fun project. Everybody's fox is going to look different. It's going to have its own personality. So share what your fox looked like or looks like, because we want to see it. Your mom wants to see it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> your dad, they would probably be really proud. So share your work. Um, if you put it on Instagram, tag us in it. Uh, Let's Go Make Art is our Instagram handle. You can join our Facebook group called Let's Make Art Together, and you can post your artwork, and it's a really great community. It's like my favorite thing. And next week, can you hand me that? So next week, is a fifth Tuesday in the month. So whenever we do a fifth Tuesday, we paint the postcard for our Let's Make Art Matter. So we're gonna paint a postcard together next week. And we're also going to paint our bonus project, which is this rainbow Ooh. Frankenstein. Ooh, ah. ah. <laughs> so um, this wasn't, this was just an extra kit that we decided to do. So you can go ahead and order this kit by itself on letsmakeart.com or you can just get the outline and use whatever paints you have at home and paint this with us. So that's next Tuesday, 7.15. And, oh, and you have until the end of this week to order the November box. So we're doing some super fun projects. I posted about them a little bit earlier on my Instagram so you can take a look, but the deadline is the end of this week. So get on that. It's the last minute. That's it, you guys. This is the type of person that waits the last minute. Yeah. This is it. This is it. It's time to shine. This is the last minute. It's time to <laughs> shine. Okay, you guys say bye. Bye. Just hands. Just hands. <laughs>